What is this telling us? Are central banks moving into gold um, more rapidly than you've seen in the past, or is this a sign of things to come? Uh, both. They they are accelerating their purchases, and I do think it's a sign of things to come. Now, when, when you talk about retail, soon everyday investors, Americans, um, I love America, but have kind of given up on Americans and gold. They they just, uh, there are, you know, there are people who have positions and, you know, your hedge funds will have paper gold, they'll do gold futures. But the everyday American has been, uh, oh, 40 years at this point of being miseducated on the topic of gold. So they, uh, they, they're not... Uh, very much into gold. You go around the world, you get very different results. You know, Switzerland, Germany, they, they, Austria, they love gold. Uh, of course, China, Asian countries, I think Australians have a much better sense than Americans do. So uh, there are the, the buyers of gold, but you say, well, okay, well, who are the big buyers of gold? The answer is the central banks. Now, right there, that should tell you something. So these are the, the most powerful, most plugged in, most heavily monetary institutions in the world and they're the ones buying gold. Now they would have you believe that gold's not money. It goes, there's no purpose. You know, it's a, you know, they, the, the, the first ones to say John Maynard Keynes said it was a barbarous relic, which he never said, by the way. He said something. Uh, he said that he said he used the phrase barbarous relic in reference to the gold exchange standard of the 1920s, which was a hybrid gold foreign currency standard, but the foreign currency is not gold. So he said, that's a barbarous relic. But he never said that about gold him, himself. And actually, at the end, toward the end of his life, he favored, at Bret Woods, he favored a gold, uh, a global currency called the backward, backed by gold. And, you know, they're, it's not guesswork. They're papers he published at the time. And that was rejected by the United States, which kind of ran the show, um, partly because our, uh, well, not to get too down, Louise, but our, 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 de- our undersecretary of the Treasury, who was our representative at Bretton Woods was a Stalinist agent. He was a communist. This didn't come out until the 90s after the fall of the Soviet Union when a lot of classified information was released, all KGB files, etc. But it was revealed and fully documented in a book by Ben Stahl called uh, um, Battle of Bretton Woods that he was a communist agent. So what was, he, what was he trying to do by insisting that, by running Keynes's idea off the road, insisting that the U.S. dollar be the anchor? <clears throat> he was trying to destroy the British Empire which he did because he knew that there were far more claims on the Bank of England than they had gold and that would be inherently unstable and that would derail sterling as one of the global reserve currencies and undermine the British Empire, which it did. So um, that's a little uh, a little bit of a backstory, but it goes to the point that uh, Keynes was, was an advocate for gold at different times in his career and at, and at the end of his career and that when the central banks are buying, I should tell you something. Now, I've said for years, um, you know, I've always pointed to Russia and China. Russia has uh, almost quadrupled their gold reserves in the last 12 years, starting in 2009 through 2020, uh, 2021. They've almost quadrupled, <coughs> pardon me, from about 600 tons to about 2,400 tons. China, the same, uh, not quite, uh, from about 600 tons to about just under 2,000 tons that they report but they're non-transparent. They have a lot more gold than that uh, stashed in uh, something called SAFE, the State Administration on Foreign Exchange, which is a secretive Chinese sovereign wealth fund run by an ex-PIMCO guy, by the way. He knows what he's doing. Um, and they, they're non-transparent. So the People's Bank of China is kind of transparent. SAFE is non-transparent. So every uh, six, seven years, what you'll see is the People's Bank of China will announce Oh, we've increased our gold reserves by 400 tons or 500 tons or whatever as the case may be. And well, it sounded like they went out the night before and bought 600 tons. You know, good luck trying that. You can't do it. Well, what it means is that that SAFE took some of the, the hidden gold that they've been acquiring slowly and moved in an accounting entry, moved it over to the People's Bank of China and boom, there's 500 tons overnight. But of course they had it all along and they still do. So they probably have more. So Russia and China are big acquirers again, tripling and quadrupling their gold reserves. But now we're seeing it in a lot of other countries. Um, uh, in the Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Mexico, uh, Iran is a major buyer, but non, non-transparent. Turkey has drastically increased its gold reserves. These are, these are major countries, uh, and they're, they're adding. So, so I look at that and there's, there's very good data from the IMF and the World Gold Council. So you can find this information, but the one that was just like not doing anything was Japan. They had about 600 tons 
but they had 600 tons for 30 years. I went back and looked at all the old days. It was like 30, never, that was boring. Who cares about Japan 600 tons? And then just about, um, at this point, about six months ago, so late last summer, um, they bumped it by, uh, I believe it was, it was 50 tons, perhaps more. I look at the exact number, but it was over 50 tons overnight. It just went from, you know, 600 tons to 650 tons, just like that. Well, here's what you know. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.